Hi everyone, welcome back to the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we are working on this piece that's behind me and if you follow my page, you may feel like you're going through deja vu, but you're not. This is a brand new piece. Um, it was inspired by another piece of furniture that I did and so I got a custom order for that, only this is a much larger piece. So it's taking that same look and putting it on a much larger piece and then we made a couple changes along the way. There are a few changes on this finish that I think you're gonna really like. I love this version of it. Um, I changed up a little bit the transfer that I use and I also left off one of the steps that I used on the other piece. Overall, it's absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the most fun finishes that I could possibly do. It's totally imaginative. Just looking at this piece, it gets all your wheels turning and you kind of just want to explore everything that's going on on it. So overall, this is like one of the most creative finishes that I love working on. So I'm super excited to be able to do it again to let you guys see what it looks like on a completely different piece of furniture um, and how to use those finishes in a totally different way. So you guys stick around. Let's get started. Here's where I started on this piece of furniture. I've actually had this in my inventory for a while and I've already done the dresser and the nightstand that match in this set. And so I was just waiting for this one to be snatched up. These pieces are too beautiful to not be a custom order for someone. Knowing the look that we're gonna be doing, the first step that I did here was start casting molds. I know that I'm gonna use a whole bunch of my resin molds, and so I need to get started on those. I did end up laying out about seven of my silicone molds from Redesign with Prima, all with different frame shapes. And then I'm gonna mix up some amazing casting resin. I mix up equal parts of A and B and stir them together in a cup, and then I'm gonna pour them into my mold. It takes about 10 minutes for these castings to fully cure, and then I'm gonna pop them out of the silicone. When I'm pouring my resin into the mold, I try to pour it as shallow as I can. I don't wanna overfill my molds because it creates a sort of hunchback on the back of them, which makes it really hard to lay on a flat surface. So I wanna underfill before I overfill my molds. Overfilled molds can also spill over onto the edges of your silicone and create a huge mess. Anywhere that my resin doesn't naturally feed into, I just use a popsicle stick or a pin or something and I help it find those details in the mold. It starts turning white as it cures. You can see the magic sort of happening before your eyes. Once the entire thing has turned white, that's telling me it's ready and I'm gonna come back and remove these. When the castings are freshly made, they do have some ability to flex, and that's when I went ahead and put them on this furniture piece. Because it has a curvature to the front of it, I wanted to lay it around the curvature while they were still fresh. As far as my dresser goes, I gave that a really thorough cleaning, removed the hardware, and then gave it a coat of Wiseal primer in, the, in light gray, and I started laying out my molds over the face of it. With my molds all attached using Titebond Quick and Thick Adhesive, I let that dry, and now it's time to come back and add some paint over the top of them. This first coat is the least fun coat in all of the coats that are gonna go on this furniture piece. And that's because I really need to take my time to get it into all the edges of those moldings. Yep, I need to cover up all that gray primer and the white resin that I have on this furniture piece. Since this is just a base coat and I like the layering effect that comes together at the end of this piece, I'm actually gonna use some colors that I don't plan to use in the final finish. They will peek through a little bit in some tiny places, but it's gonna give me the coverage I need um, using similar colors that are gonna add to the layering effect. I do plan to use shades of blue and green on this one, and so I'm keeping them in roughly the same location that my blues and greens will be, even though these are not the final colors that'll appear in my finish. I'm using my Klingon S50 brushes and I'm just working around the edge of each mold. This does take quite a bit of time, you guys, this base coat, to make sure that I have all those edges covered, that I get it into all the seams and crevices. Now it's time to work my way over to the side of this piece, so I went ahead and turned it, and I'm gonna apply the same blue and green in a blend up the side of the piece. I start out by framing it out in my dark blue paint, and then I'm gonna come back and add that highlight of green in the center. Again, these are not my final colors. I just wanna get a base coat of paint down to cover up that primer. So with my base coat on, this piece actually did sit for a little bit. Because I had to order my transfers, I knew I couldn't get too far ahead of myself. I had to wait for those to come in the mail. Once that was done and I had everything I needed, I came back to this piece and let's go ahead and put some colors on here that I do actually plan to use. This is Wiseal paint and this color is called Spanish Olive. It is the most beautiful accent color and I find myself using it more and more. You can see as I'm laying this coat of paint on that I do let those colors underneath sort of just peek through in some areas and that's gonna give it a little bit of contrast. The next color that I'm gonna to start to apply is Wiseal Paint and Siren Song. And this is this sort of electric blue, but when it blends into that Spanish olive, it creates amazing shades of green in between. 
This is one of my favorite parts about blending is you also get to see all the colors that are made in between when you start blending two colors together. That siren song is going to help my green transition into the blue tones that I'm going to use around the outer edges. I'm going to add some Poseidon, which is the dark blue that I'll use around the outer edge of this piece. But this is still just part of the layering effect. The effect this is not my final coat, so I'm going to come back and add a couple more colors over the top of this too. When I'm doing these next coats, I'm not getting as quite as thorough of coverage as I got on that first coat when I wanted to cover the primer and the white molds. I am letting those colors underneath just peek through in those areas and it just adds this really pretty sort of layering effect. Let's turn some music on as I finish layering up this coat and when we get to our next coat, that's gonna be my final layer. All right, we did it. Here is that coat once it's dry and it's time to go ahead and layer on my final colors over the top. This color is called Foxtrot, also from Wiseall Paint. I will list all these colors that I'm using in the description for this video. For this final coat, I'll be using Wiseall Paint in Foxtrot, Poseidon, and then that Spanish olive again in the center. We are finally to my final layer of paint on this. And so this is where I'm really gonna pay attention to the blending on this piece. It was a little bit of a challenge to blend over the top of all these frames because you have to remember I'm still trying to make sure that I get it around and covering all the crevices that these frames make on this piece. And so I did have to take my time. This final coat took quite a bit of time to make sure that it was blended together and looked nice and even as it transitioned over all the texture that I added to the front of this one. It's really hard to see on camera, but I can see in person everywhere that those little bits of layers of the different colors of blues and greens have added so much depth to this color. My last step on this blend is going to be to work these colors together. I added a little mist of water and then I'm using the uh, Klingon B12 brush. This is a large block brush that I use to blend these colors together and it works really well over these nice large surfaces. The last step I'm going to do in this paint finish is I'm going to add some dry brushing over the top. So here I am dry brushing using my Klingon S50 and I'm just dry brushing a little bit of that Spanish olive so that it hits the top of those molds. And then where I have the Poseidon, I'm going to dry brush in a little bit of that siren song. And this just adds highlights to some of the texture that I've created with the brush strokes in the paint and then over the top of those molds as well. Here is this piece with all the paint complete. It's a beautiful blend and a stunning paint combination. So now it's time to fill these molds up and I did this using a combination of two different transfers. On the smaller piece that I that was our inspiration for this, I just used one transfer which was the collector's closet, but this is a much larger piece and I had many more frames to fill. So I added in a second transfer to get some variety. I cut my transfers apart and I just started laying them out by what fit inside each frame. Now it's time to decorate these frames a little bit and I'm gonna start out doing that using a little bit of glaze. I did add a coat of clear coat to the front of this piece before I added my glaze and that's just so my paint is nice and protected so that I can wipe my glaze back as I go. I brush my glaze onto a few frames at a time, probably about three or four, and then once I've got it into all those details, I'm gonna come back and wipe it away with a dry rag and then I used a wet rag to remove any of the excess from around the edges. This is gonna get that glaze into the details of those frames and it's really gonna set them off from the blue and the green paint. 
The clear coat that I put underneath just allows my paint to be wipeable. So as I'm removing this glaze, it's not going to want to stick to the paint. Without that clear coat underneath, the glaze can have a tendency to stain the paint and it's not as easy to wipe away. If you guys have been following my pages for a while, you know that I do not enjoy glazing. It's probably one of my least favorite things to do. It's basically cleaning a whole lot. And so I did enjoy this process. It was a lot of glaze. So when I was done, I was extremely happy about it. Now it's time to add some wax details and you can see in that camera shot right there that down below I have the wax and no wax up top. So let's see what difference a little bit of wax makes. When do I use wax versus glaze? Well, I use glaze to get into all those fine details. It's a liquid. It finds all those low points really well. I like it for that purpose. But when I want this smeary, smudgy effect, only wax can do the job. I'm using Annie Sloan wax here and I decorate with her waxes a lot because um, I've let this dry out a little bit and it gets nice and firm um, where I can put it exactly where I want it to and it actually stays in place. I'm just applying my wax around some of the edges of my frames using an artist brush and then I'm going to come back and smudge that out and so it lightly fades out into this uh, sort of shadowing effect as I go out into some of these frames. I use a variety of artist brushes for this and then when I get to the final step I'm going to use a slightly larger one to sort of smudge it out around the edges of the frames. And yes, I did this around each of these frames individually. So this also took a lot of time. These frames get a lot of decoration and thankfully I enjoy these small processes because it was a lot of detail work. You can see here how each frame frames out a different sort of design in the center of it. I've got some bugs, I've got some apothecary stuff. It just makes this piece really interesting to have something different inside each of these frames. My final step to decorate these frames is going to be a little bit of gold gilding wax from Redesign with Prima. This color is called Eternal. So with the glaze and the wax and then the gold over top and my layered paint effect, it really starts to come together. The top of Honor Inspiration piece was a wood stain top and so I did the same on this and I stripped it back to raw wood. I asked my customer what tone of wood she would like in her room and she sent me a photo and I'm going to try to match that and I'm going to do it using Carts and Millie washed away stain. I love this. This is a water-based stain and this color is called Coffs Jetty. It's absolutely beautiful. I've used this stain before and I think it takes to every piece of wood a little bit differently but it is the prettiest color. It's got a little bit of gray tones to it so so it gives you this sort of aged wood look. I worked a coat of the washed away stain into the entire top of this piece and then I decided that I wanted a little bit darker so I came back and I did a second coat once it was dry. With my stain nice and dry this piece is complete it's time to go get some clear coat. I'm going to spray on two coats of Wiseau matte varnish over the entire body of this piece. Next, of course, comes staging day, and I staged this with some gold frames to tie in with the frames that are on the body of this piece, some pretty florals. Look at how much detail. You guys, I also love how the hardware sort of hides in the frames and it weaves in and out of them. It makes it even more fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video as much as I have. I love working on this finish. We did leave off the orange drips that I did on the initial inspiration piece and I love it either way. You guys can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you'll click that subscribe button for more weekly painting tutorials here at Brush by Brandy on YouTube.